die. Blood pressure is dropping fast. He's going into cardiac arrest. I don't understand. Mike's heart is useless. He's going to need a transplant or he's going to die. He will make Mike so sick. Transplant surgery is very expensive. We got insurance. There are no provisions in your policy for a procedure of this magnitude. All right, you want money? I'll get you your money. We've recently switched carriers. We only give assistance to patients without coverage. I'm sorry, I can't help you. Have you tried Medicaid? No, you don't qualify. My son is dying. I'm broke. If I don't qualify, who the hell does? I've done everything I can do. I'm sorry. Please. They are releasing him. Now you need to do Don't something. Take care. Hear me. Do something. The police will do whatever is necessary to preserve the lives of these hostages. Well, they're telling me I gotta take my son home and watch him die. If you could speak to John Q right now, what would you say to him? I'm there with you and you can take care. 515, when something happens for me, I got a shot at this guy and I'm gonna take it. My son is gonna bury me. Take the shot. How's it gonna end, John? Hello. Hey, hey, hey. What's up? What's up? What's up? Look at your, your background. Oh, I know. I just, I'm just hanging out with my with my uh my mom and my dad and my mom. You know, um your homies. <laughs> yeah, you know, we're just going for a no nice little ride in the countryside. Um just after the baseball game. You know how you know how it is. Every day with, with Denzel is a good day. You know what I mean, um, but yeah, let's talk about uh, let's talk about one of my dad's uh, classic movies, John Q. Should we go get into and it? Maybe. Yeah. So and maybe I was surprised, guys. I usually don't like Gammy's movies at all. Every time that I watch when he chooses movie, I'm like, ah, so boring. Oh. But this one, I was like, what a movie. Yes. yes. Amazing. I was I was surprised. What what mm -hmm. happened as you showed this movie? Yeah, so essentially um this 2002 um movie uh by the name of John Q is about uh John Q Archibald, played by my dad Denzel, um, and also has Kimberly Elise Denise Archibald who has a son, Michael, who needs an emergency heart transplant. Um, and essentially what happens is because they're from a low-income uh, household, their insurance was not able to cover it. So essentially um, Denzel had to take matters into his own hands and hold the hospital, at least the emergency ward, under hostage and try to force the hand of individuals to try it and get attention for his son. So... Um, in, other than Denzel being a big name in the movie, we also had from the likes of James Woods, who played the doctor, Dr. Raymond, and Ray Lurieta, um, who was the chief, chief Monroe in the movie. So essentially, um, there's you know how these things with Denzel do is it's very high impact, high energy. They've got, you know, him working working the system and also being the man of the people, which he is often on the camera. So um, the movie, though it's an hour and 56 minutes, directed by Nick Cav Caveras, um, on a $40 million budget, $40 million budget, it made $102 million, pounds, uh, million uh, USD dollars, uh, so which made it a good success. I'm very surprised that not a lot of people know of the movie, like yourself, but however, once you watch the movie, you realize like, hey... This is actually something really good um, of a watch and very entertaining from start to finish. So um, I, I guess a part of this movie is all about trying to address what people will be pushed to do in hard situations, especially for loved ones. Um, and then, you know, Denzel, much like Man on Fire or, or um, what's the other movie that he did? Um, or Equalizer, where he's essentially... Um, amazing movie I've taking, them taking all. action and you know yeah. for the little man and trying to right some wrongs right so in, in this case it's the big insurance government and uh, conglomerates um that weren't able to help out the little man as much as we'd hope so um yeah so to move the movie high impact so from the start they 
story building was good. I was able to connect with the family, understand the situation very quickly. And it's, you know, the little boy who was Michael, Mike, played by Daniel Smith. Um, you, you, we definitely saw like how cute he was with his big smile, big energy. He wanted to be a big bodybuilder, you know, and things like that. And then to have all that kind of energy and life come out of, you know, out of his big heart, literally and figuratively, you know, you, you kind of really fell in love with him or at least you should have at least had some sort of feelings positive feelings towards him yeah um, yeah like i think the the denzel washington's performance was amazing yeah it was sure. amazing like all the emotion like was like i don't know i i can't even explain i think it was very good i mean i didn't like the i mean the wife what was her name like Kimberly? Denise. Yeah, Denise. Or her name was Kim- no, but her her name in the movie was Kim Kimberly. Kim, yes. So her real name in Kimberly Elise, but in the movie is Denise. Denise, yeah. What? Well, yeah, yeah. Denise. Um, she was okay. I think she was nagging a lot at the beginning, and oh. she was putting everything on him. You know, I had a feeling that. Like everything was like his fault, whatever was happening. I mean, I do understand that she was stressed out, but uh, but then she was like changing. Like it was like you know, it was like she was a kind of moody. Mm. Um, but she also had a good performance when she was in the hus- at the hospital. Mm-hmm. Um, but Denzel Washington, like, um, it was very emotional. It was a very emotional movie, and you could really feel what was happening because basically the performance was up to the point that you could really imagine maybe you would have done the same oh absolutely absolutely and then like uh you know uh, it d- despite what um one might want to believe in terms of um seeing the system not work for them there are people within the system that were able to try and open up the eyes of others. So um, there's Kevin Connolly, who was the male nurse in the emergency room that started telling, you know, um, Denzel's character saying, hey, you know, the reason why a lot of these treatments get missed by low income people is because they um, they essentially just doing superficial checks on people just to pass them through a system saying they're doing the job, but it's not actually a deep enough check. Um, yeah. And, you know, so there's good and bad to be taken from people within the healthcare industry. And that kind of shows that there. Um, we also had like additional side characters, you know, people coming into the emergency ward. You had a father, uh, to be father, bringing his pregnant wife into the ward. And then you like, you also kind of com- uh, felt some sort of feelings towards him because you can just put yourself in that situation and say, hey, this would be a really crap situation to be in in yeah you know, to not have that kind of care or you know this is the worst day to be caught up in these kind of ordeals but there's these small stories that are essentially been brought in by the different characters the abusive boyfriend and the girlfriend right um and the security guard and things like that so they brought in a lot of small elements from other side mm-hmm. characters and they also added more to story they they weren't as big as distractions as other movies that I've seen, but um, but still, it definitely built up towards um, how the movie came out. But um, but yeah, uh, <clears throat> in regards to um, favorites, for me, favorite uh, scenes, um, mm-hmm. I think my favorite scene was uh, was essentially when Denzel. Um, was had to negotiate with uh with the police commissioner right where Lori Loretta's uh, character um and essentially tried to say you know I'm doing this all for my son my son I I will not bury my son my son would bury me right so words like that really um really channel with individuals like myself who are family oriented and you know these are the yeah. worst fears one could ever be um keep put in that kind of situation that movie kind of uh, brought that a little bit to light that you know what that's absolutely right like 
if I was in his situation, I I definitely don't want to bury my son. You know, that's one of the worst pains one can ever yeah. get into. Right. How about you? I I really like the scene that uh he basically was at the hospital. So right right before he wanted to kill himself. So he was talking to his son and he was just like the acting was amazing. Mm -hmm. Like you could really feel the pain in his eyes and he was crying and he was like, like it was taking his time to just digest mm -hmm. what he was about to do and then trying to say whatever he needed to know. And then just, just talking to his son because he already knew that this is probably the last minutes that he can see him and talk to him. So it was very, very nice, very, very brave. And maybe for me, I really loved the performance. So that's why I was I really like that scene. It was very emotional. Mm -hmm. Very emotional. That's true. Well, um uh the the funny part about um this movie, it it actually once I did my research, I was like, wow, this movie actually channels a little bit more towards me is because one, it was actually filmed in Canada. It was filmed in Hamilton, Ontario. So just outside of Toronto. Thank you. In Hamilton? So, yeah, yeah. It was filmed, filmed there. Um, and there's a, I guess there's a little um, creative liberty in terms of the origin of the story. Like there was a, it's not based on a true story, but a similar incident did happen in 1989 where a 26-year-old um, man called Henry was shot dead while holding a uh, doctor hostage in an imitation handgun. So, and, you know, so essentially he did have a hostage situation and people are just speculating what led him to do something like that. Um, so, which happened two or uh, three years before the movie came out. So maybe there is a chance that, you know, this, there's a lot of truth to this movie, but um for us Canadians, you know, it's we're quite lucky that we have healthcare that allows us to be able to have certain liberties. But not everyone is is quite lucky to have that, you know, same uh, access. Um, so, you know, as much as possible, try to think about the future. Get yourself enrolled in the right program so you don't get done by the man. Um, yeah. Also, yeah. also in Spain, like we have like healthcare. So. Oh. I don't I don't remember not even once just paying for the doctor like even when you get the I mean if you go to the pharmacy and you get some medicines you have to pay for it but if you if it's like a prescription you mm -hmm. basically pay nothing like I pay like one euro like oh, really? oh geez yeah that's a I great mean, I, I even pay like 70 cents for some pills I was like okay but like normal price probably is like five euros and then if it's like a prescription it's like 70 cents 80 cents so it's 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 pretty good if every time that you want to like even like a, do like the whole like a analysis test whatever you want to do like it's everything's free so it's just you know for me it's 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 a question like what would people do like in the u.s the people that not everyone has a full-time job not everyone you know they have money so like it's 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 horrible every time you have to be stressed out what would happen if something happens to me and then i can basically get the, get treatment it's mm -hmm. it's so annoying it's and it's, I don't know, from the country, like USA, that everybody, like, is American dreams and everything when there's no health insurance for people. Is yeah. I and people consider, like, <clears throat> is healthcare a basic human right, you know? So, um, yeah. which is what's... You are paying taxes. You're paying a lot of taxes. So, mm -hmm. hello. Where does yeah. it go? So, like, what is... What is all the taxes you pay for good for if it's not for helping individuals like that, right? So, but however, um, every system is set up differently. So some are better than others, but um, justification of action needs to be, uh, justifying one's actions needs to be really questioned as to why they might be pushed to do such things. It's all because of the system that they're placed in, that they think this is their only right way to get their basic human rights. So, right. 
All in all, um, I thought it was a good movie. What did you want to rate it? I will go first. Um, I rate that movie, at least as definitely the first time I watched it, a solid eight. Um, and as of recent, I think I'm still going to give it a solid eight out of 10. I would do the same. Eight. eight or even 8.5 8.5 all right so 8.25 salty pop, salty popcorn review um <clears throat> so imbd gave it a 7.1 out of 10 um and ron tomatoes gave it surprising 24 percent. so it was not a fresh movie but um for those that have watched the movie let us know do you think uh we rated it fairly or is it rotten tomato there they need to reevaluate their rating system. So definitely leave a uh, like, subscribe, and uh, comment. And share. And share, <laughs> of course. You know, um, and then let us know what other um, wonderful quotes or John or Denzel Washington movies you want us to watch and review. But um, next yeah. week is my. This week is your next week is your week. So hopefully, uh, you also are able to get an eight out of ten scoring like I did mine, but no pressure, All right? And then I'm sure that you'll have a wonderful background. You know, put we'll put in wonderful individuals in your background. Hey, Dad. So you know, maybe it might be you. Maybe it might be someone else. Who knows? Maybe stripper room. <laughs> oh, okay. Chocolate City. Let's go, Magic Mike. All right, I see. I know exactly what you want. Especially if, if you play one of the Demi Moore's movie that she's a stripper. <laughs> yes, yes. I think that's called your lap dance. I, I actually haven't watched that movie. Um, right. Yeah, so the stripper movie uh, that she's in, uh, what's it called now? I think it's it's called Lap Dance. Oh, Stirp Tease. It's called yeah. Stirp Tease. Mm. yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I definitely... Don't mind watching that, you know, it's just for purely educational purposes, purely. Exactly. <laughs> all right. All right. We'll see you next week. All right. Yeah. Bye, guys. All right. See you.